Hey everyone, this is Chris from Sync Main, and today I'm going to be talking about alternatives to Unity. I'm not going to go into too much detail about the changes that Unity made to their own licensing structure. Um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of coverage of that, and with any luck, Unity will have an update for us soon, uh, either reverting changes or making promises for the future. Um, because what I will say is, the problem with these kinds of uh, companies and um, their licensing structures is they can change at any time and they can make retroactive changes. So if you're fully embedded in their ecosystem and they make a change later that negatively affects you and your game is in their engine, it's not uh, exactly a trivial uh, issue. Uh, moving it to another engine is usually just not possible in a lot of the cases, especially for teams with smaller budgets. Um, so let's get into some of the alternatives. You're going to be hearing a lot about Godot if you haven't already. Um, it is a fully open source software engine. Uh, it has a lot of support and a huge community around it. Um, there are a lot of Godot evangelists in my own personal dev circle, and I think that's for good reason. Uh, uh, Godot 4 has been out for a little while now. Uh, there's a lot of modern features, features and great changes. Um, and uh, everything from being able to support multiple languages for development. Um, they, they have, uh, I think it's like GD extension or something like that. What is it? Let's look at it together. That's why I have the screen screen. Um, yeah, GD extension API. So if you're a fan of Rust or Python or JavaScript, you can actually uh, write game code using any of those languages. Um, but built in, there is support for GD script and I believe C sharp. Um, the latest long term uh, uh, support release is still version 3, um, but I imagine if you're getting started now, uh, you can probably start with the latest version, especially if you're just learning, and everything that you learn will probably be applicable for those uh, long, long term support releases uh, in the future. So, up next, uh, I learned about this one yesterday, my coworker told me about it. Uh, it's a game engine called Defold, and it has a bit of an interesting history. I saw it was King's uh, uh, game engine, and they spun it off into a fully open source project, which is very cool. Um, so one of the litmus tests that you should be looking for when you're looking for alternatives or just picking a game engine in general, or any SDKs, is if people are shipping games with it. Um, if you're using an engine that doesn't really have a uh, proven track record for um, having games being made with it and having developers be happy to create games with it, it's probably not a good idea. So everything that I'm going to be recommending today, people have shipped games with, including uh, Default. Uh, if we look at the showcase here, uh, oh, I did want to say this engine is uh, C++ and uh, they have Lua scripting support and Lua debugging. So. It's very cool. Um, I know some people have issues with Lua, but people have issues with every language. Um, I think it's a perfectly good language for getting games out the door. Um, yeah, so you can see plenty of games have shipped. Uh, a lot of these are 2D, so I think this is just a 2D engine, but um, still pretty powerful. And um, uh, I was looking at the GitHub link earlier. Um, it's very promising, very cool stuff and uh, they're not going to change the licensing on you anytime soon. Up next uh, is the Bevy engine. Uh, again, similar to Godot, fully open source. Um, I think the scripting is visual scripting system that they have. Render graph, maybe that's not it. Um, but yeah, so one I've been meaning to check out. I uh, haven't done as much Rust learning as I think some other people have been doing, but I wanted to mention this because there are a lot of Rust fans out there, and this is probably the most matured uh, game engine that uses Rust uh, at its core. Um, and obviously, they have the ECS data-driven development mindset and mentality. Uh, so if you're into those things, this might be the engine for you. Um, outside of that, uh, if you're looking to build your own engine, a uh, tip I picked up from reading Ron Gilbert's blog or Twitter is that he likes to use uh, SDL for managing uh, the kinds of things that you have to worry about in developing um, cross-platform uh, games because SDL, which I'll click to here, 
manages uh, input and window management and those sorts of things. And having used it myself, I know it's pretty quick to spin up and it's very reliable. Um, and again, it, you know, it's it's got a great community around it. Uh, you're unlikely to run into any unique issues. And when you do, you'll be able to find people who you can talk to and, and solve the issue together. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of SDL, SDL2. Um, and uh, there are uh, performance issues you might run into with rendering, but uh, the great part is you can just write your own uh, rendering layer if you're so inclined. Mabel is just so excited. She came here to tell you about it. Um, she's actually wanting to tell you about the end of the video where I talk about her favorite game engine. Um, so she's wanting me to get to that now. It's not that there's a green screen behind me and she's like losing her mind trying to climb to get to it. That's not what's happening at all. She's just really excited about the game engine that I'm going to talk about at the end. Um, if you're into mobile game development or looking into mobile game development, especially if you're just starting out, um, you can check out uh, both Android and iOS. There are game development uh, libraries that are uh, meant for that platform, built for the platform, and are a bit streamlined. I'm sure most of you only have one phone, if you have one at all. So if you have an Android phone, check out the Android Game Development Kit. And if you're on Apple, uh, check out Sprite Kit. I was actually looking at Sprite Kit recently. I've been learning some Swift and checking out uh, Mac OS and iOS game development. Um, so I think what is cool is I think they're very beginner friendly, um, but they're also powerful enough where I could see myself shipping games using them. Um, obviously you might want to pick one. Uh, if you make a game for the Android game development kit, uh, I'm sure you're going to have to do a lot of work to get that same game to run uh, on iOS. But if you're only targeting one platform, I think these are great ways to make games or uh, learn to make games uh, on your own. And of course the licensing is uh, much more ideal than some recent major game engines. Finally, I did want to talk about Unreal. So Unreal has a fairly indie dev friendly licensing model for now. Things could change in the future, but I think it is worth mentioning because Blueprint is incredibly powerful and you can write your own code in C++ and you can see the underlying code um, which is very helpful for debugging and learning. Uh, so uh, I would be remiss not to at least mention Unreal Engine as an alternative to uh, Unity, even though there are free, fully free options available. Uh, it's a very powerful engine, and especially if you're looking to get into AAA game development, um, I think it's, uh, help, uh, it's going to be beneficial for you to learn. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you for watching. If there's any tools, SDKs, or game engines that you use that you're a fan of, please write a comment down below. Let me know what those are. I'll be reading all of them, but uh, also other people will be reading them too. So if I fail to mention something, you talking about it down below will be helpful. Also, if you don't have a recommendation, please go read the comments. You might find something that I failed to mention here, and I'll try to highlight those things too down in the comments. So. Thank you again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.